All right, so I wanted to do a quick video about all the upgrades I've done on the house and the property since I've been here. And um, the first upgrade we want to talk about actually was done before I moved in. This was uh, the roof job that I actually uh, had done in 2010, which is uh, before I moved into the house. This is the only project I didn't do entirely on my own. I hired a couple of people to come out and, and do this uh, roofing job for me. And I think they did a pretty decent job. This is uh, the white roofing, uh, I believe is called Duralast, but don't quote me on that. And uh, I think they did a pretty good job, came out pretty good. And the original roof was the black EPDM rubber roofing that you can see in this picture and in this one. Um, and being a black roof, it, it sucked up the sun, got really hot, just not the best roofing idea. Um, I didn't do any of the roofing, but I did do some of the prep work. I dug around the berm to expose the, uh, the edge of the roof so that they could do the roofing job. Uh, at the front of the house there, you can see the valley um, on the roof where it catches the water and drops it into the waterfall and into the cistern. That water is used uh, strictly as wash water. Um, I don't drink that water and I don't give it to the dogs. I have a well down the street that I go to to fill up some jugs for drinking water. Um, although the water is probably safe, it has an ozone generator running in the cistern uh, all the time, uh, but I still uh, wouldn't drink it. Uh, so uh, uh, the well water is my primary source for drinking water. As I come up onto the roof here, um, the next uh, thing I'm going to show you is the solar array that I added to the house. Um, it was a significant upgrade. The uh, original panel that was here when I got here was just a, uh, a single 100 watt panel um, that was clearly just not adequate for anything. And uh, you can see that here in the right side of the picture in the upper right hand corner of the frame, just one single 100 watt panel. Just not good enough, obviously, and I added the uh, 280 watt panels and strings of two uh, to make a total of 1680 watts. Uh, the first string is on the original pole mount, which was augmented a little bit to hold the larger panels, uh, but it's quite strong and does a decent job um, as the mount for those two uh, first panels. Then I built these racks mostly out of Unistrut. The first one's actually built a little bit stronger and only has the two cross pieces. The other one next to it, I used three because it was entirely made out of Unistrut and it's a little bit weaker. Uh, so I used three pieces to make sure it was strong enough. The panels are fairly heavy. And these racks uh, were made to tilt on, the, on that part that you can see right there. That's a, a point where it can slide if you loosen up the bolt. And then at the front, it has a pivot point um, that allows the, uh, the arrays to be tilted um, in different seasons. Now I don't do that anymore because uh, they make so much power that you really don't need to. Um, it's, there's so much power coming off of that array that tilting them is just, it's just not necessary. So I don't even bother to tilt them anymore, although it does have that ability. The next upgrade was a recent upgrade. Uh, this is the solar tracker with a 400 watt array on it. Um, and uh, that wasn't really to add overall solar. You can see the tracker itself is powered by those 275 watt panels on the roof there. Um, but as I say, it wasn't to really add uh, uh, to the overall solar, but to, rather to pick up the sun earlier in the day and to hold on to it later in the day. And I just happened to be filming up here uh, when the sun came up over the ridge and it, that's when the solar tracker woke up and started angling towards the sun. So you can see that happening now. Uh, and it extends my solar day by at least a couple of hours. Uh, so it was well worth uh, the purchase and uh, the project to put that up. Um, I, this is a, uh, I believe it's called Eco-Worthy Solar Tracker I picked up from Amazon. It was fairly inexpensive and I haven't had it through the winter yet, um, but we'll see how it does. Um, but like I said, I think it was well worth it. And even in the summertime has extended my solar day you know, by at least a couple of hours. So I think it was worth doing. Uh, so, sort of sticking with the power system here, the next uh, upgrade we're going to look at was the, is the wind turbine. And the turbine itself is an 1800 watt turbine. And it's mounted on top of this wooden tower structure that I made. 
uh, using mostly um, uh, six by six uh, timbers. Um, and that, that primary timber there, the, the long one's 16 feet long and the turbine sticks up about four feet above that. Whole thing's on top of the berm, so it brings it about 25 to 30 feet above ground level. Uh, you can see there's the winch, uh, hand winch on the that timber there, and there's a pivot point at the bottom of the pole that the top, that the wind turbine is actually attached to, allows me to tilt it down for maintenance, so I can actually uh, reach it right from the roof. So that's that's a a, a good convenience um, for maintenance on that. Uh, now on the front of that, you can see the satellite dish, and that satellite dish was not for television; that was for internet. And I don't use it anymore because anybody that has ever had satellite internet can tell you that it is the worst possible solution for internet. Uh, very expensive for what you get and very low data caps, just not very good solution. So I switched over to cellular and you can see the crossbar on that mast there with the two Yagi antennas. Those provide me with uh, internet service through a uh, data line I got from T-Mobile. And then at the top of the antenna mast there, you can see another Yagi antenna uh, next to the TV antenna that are just below it that um, provides uh, cellular service inside the house. So uh, between those two uh, sets of antennas, I get a good, cell, uh, good cell service in the house and pretty decent internet service with a much higher cap than you can get from a satellite provider. So, and the cost is just a fraction of what you would pay for satellite. So much better solution than satellite internet. On the side of the house here, originally there was a solar hot water heater, you can see here. And um, there's a lot of problems with having a solar hot water heater where the tank is outside like that. Uh, overnight, the, the water would cool off. And then in the morning, many times on a colder night, the pipes would actually be frozen and you wouldn't have any hot water at all. Um, so not a great solution in this area, at least. So now you can see these four uh, solar panels on the front of the house there. Those now power um, an electric hot water heater I converted from AC over to DC. And I made a video about that you can check out if you're interested. You can also check out the video on the solar tracker as well uh, on my channel. I did a, video, a whole series of videos on the solar tracker as well. Uh, but the hot water heater the, with the electric uh, uh, hot water heater, it's, it's much better. And I'm expecting that over the winter, um, it'll be a much better solution. Um, we'll see this winter. As I take a walk around the house here, you can see on the left-hand side, you just get a glimpse of the cabin. That was one of the, the single most expensive ad additions to the property. It's a 12 by 20 cabin uh, that I use for workout space. I have a couple of guys that come up once a week and we uh, do martial arts training in the cabin. It's set up for uh, with mats on the floor and and the martial arts equipment in there. It's, it's, uh, it's a pretty good space for that, actually. And as I walk around the side, you can see that 100-watt panel there that powers the LED lights in the cabin and also a, a TV in there that I use when we're working out. Um, and that 100-watt panel, that was the one that was from the roof, uh, from the berm originally when I came out here, was, was all the, the house had for electricity. So it's good enough for the cabin. It wasn't good enough for the house. And the, the cabin has gutters on it, and they deliver their water to that 275-gallon tank that's under the white tarp there. That provides me with my outdoor water, um, give me an outdoor spigot. At least during the summertime, it freezes solid in the winter. And then as we come back to the house, you can see the pergola I added to give a little shade over here. The sun is so intense out here that you really do need shade if you want to hang out at, outside at all. Uh, so I created this pergola. And this is the house before the pergola and before the security door as well. I added a security door um, as well. And you can see that here uh, allows me to leave that inner door open during the day. If I'm not home, I can close the security door and lock it and still have the house uh, secure uh, and still allow the air to get through and, and uh, keep the house from getting too hot while I'm not there. The other thing I did over here was raise the level of the walkway that was originally a low spot and uh, it really caused uh, a mess um, when it was wet so in the winter time it would it would freeze and turn into this mess and in the summertime during uh, monsoon season it would just turn into uh, mud and it made it nasty coming in and out so raising the level adding these pavers and the aggregate kind of helps quite a bit obviously i need some more stone here uh, the stone that i put down 
uh, was just a leftover stone from one of my neighbor's uh, projects that she let me have after they were done with their project. And I'm going to need to add a little bit more there, obviously. But even as it is there, it's much better and it allows you to come in and out of the house without making an, a, just an utter mess uh, with either uh, walking through the muck or walking through the, uh, the ice and just a frozen sheet of ice there. So the other thing I did over on this side of the house was to add the tarp uh, that's strung between the pergola and the two posts in the front yard. Um, that provides a little additional shade, uh, especially over the picnic table over there, just to make it a little nicer to hang out, uh, you know, during, especially during the summer when, it's, when it's, the sun's really hot. Uh, and you really do need shade if you're going to hang out outside here. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the upgrades uh, for this video. Uh, there's only one other thing I wanted to talk about, and I just wanted to mention that I do read the comments, um, and I do encourage you to leave comments, and I will respond to the comments when appropriate. Uh, there is, however, one type of comment I've seen a couple of times now I wanted to mention, and it uh, is a negative comment about the aesthetics of either the house or the property in general. Um, and that kind of comment you can just keep to yourself because um, the point right now is to get the property up to the point where all the systems uh, basically take care of themselves and you don't have to worry about it. And I can just live in the house and not think about uh, what the systems are doing. They're just going to be self-sufficient. If I worry about the aesthetics, uh, it will be much further down the road and it'll be after I've got all that straightened out. So I really don't need to hear comments about the aesthetics of the of the property or the house itself um, however if you have comments about any of the projects you think that uh, i've done something that could have been done differently or better um, i encourage that kind of comment if you have a question about anything i'd be happy to answer any questions that you have uh, so i do encourage comments and i like i say i do read them all and i will respond when appropriate anyway that's the uh, extent of this video and i thank you for stopping by my channel